I got a call from an urban landowner who was dealing with a chipmunk infestation. So I asked how bad it was, and she basically said that they're everywhere. They had gotten into her back porch. They had tore up her yard significantly by digging holes, got into her, her vegetable seed and her, and her bulbs. They had gotten into her pet food. They were even tearing up the cushions on her patio chairs for bedding in their own homes. When you have a few of these little buggers, it usually isn't too bad, but like most rodents, their populations can explode out of control. And when that happens, you usually have to take care of them some way or another. Some people use poison. This landowner didn't like the idea of using poison. I don't blame her. I wouldn't want little poison caches around my yard. And some people use the have a heart live traps as well. But I can tell you flat out that um, once you catch them, what do you do with them? Well, I'll tell you what most people do with them. They get a five gallon bucket of water and throw the trap and chipmunk into that bucket. So when I got there, the first position I took was up on this balcony, which was pretty convenient for getting an overhead look at the whole land and also giving me the advantage of being able to fire on more locations. This elevated position also gave me an advantage in that my pellets were always heading toward the ground so I didn't have to worry about them carrying onto neighbor's property. And something I've learned over time is that even though headshots do equal instant death for the animals, they frequently leave the animals squirming and kicking around on the ground due to the nature of the brain being destroyed but the nerves still firing. A lot of landowners unfamiliar with hunting look at an animal writhing around and kicking on the ground like that and they assume that it's in pain. Of course it's not. But if I can avoid that conversation or stirring those emotions, I will. So I'll take a heart and lung shot if someone's looking over my shoulder. Here's one that stopped with his body 50% over the concrete and 50% over the wood shavings. I did not want to take a shot that would pass through him onto the concrete, threatening a ricochet. So I aimed this one a little bit higher, take a spine shot on him, guaranteeing that the pellet impacts the wood shavings behind him. What I wasn't prepared for is how devastating a spine shot can look like in slow motion on one of these guys from an elevated position. Holy cow. During about a 20 minute lull, Mr. Robin here entertained me during that downtime. He flew down to the garden area here looking for some dinner, and wait till you see this. He's about to yank up a nightcrawler in slow motion. This is pretty cool, I think. I used to think, judging by the way the Robin orients their head, that they're using sound. Come to find out, Robins don't use sound, they don't use their hearing to listen for these worms, rather they use their sight to see tiny movements in the dirt and then strike in those areas. It is interesting how the, the robin beats down the nightcrawler before swallowing it, so that the worm wouldn't writhe and wiggle around once inside them. That's just a guess, but they all seem to do the same thing. They pull it out of the ground and they don't just gulp it right down, they, they beat it up before swallowing it. And after rooting around in the mud, it's good to clean yourself off afterward. While this elevated position was a lot of fun, it was proving too slow considering the amount of animals that were on this land. So I decided to change my strategy a little bit. I decided to use this jungle gym as my blind and lay down some peanuts at the edge of the hostas to bait in as many as I possibly could. The first thing I had to do when I was inside this jungle gym though was get rid of these unwanted guests. Ten seconds in a garden hose took care of that. As usual, I work a lot faster when I don't have a scope cam attached. 
so I shot a few through the scope cam, then took it off and got down to business. What took about two hours to kill 14 from the elevated balcony position, I killed close to 40 of them with this peanut baiting station within an hour and a half. And no surprise, my baiting station was used by more than just the chipmunks. This gray squirrel comes along looking to fill his cheeks. I'd have been happy to stick him and put him in my freezer, but the landowner wanted to keep him alive, so I decided just to put one across his bow to let him know I didn't want him there by my baiting station. He didn't come back after this. In total, I killed 55, maybe 58 chipmunks that day. They're too small to really make a meal for a person. Well, maybe 55 of them could have fed me, but I'm not going to clean 55 chipmunks. Um, so anyway, I just picked them up, threw them in a pail, and took them to the various farms around the area that I know of um, to feed to their farm cats. And that brings us to the end of another one, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next one.